What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, is it weird to... Do you find yourself pondering after you watch an episode of Andor, you ask yourself the question, why isn't everyone watching this show? Why is no one talking about the show? It's not because it's whack. If you're saying that, we can't have a conversation. Yeah, if you yeah. if you think Black Adam is a classic and you think this show stinks, I don't really know. I can't help you. I'm sorry. <laughs> we just we cool. We'll, we'll, we'll give ourselves the what and keep it moving. But because we can't, we can't really have a discussion. Brian, this show uh, is amazing. I cannot wait for the second season, which we will unfortunately have to wait uh, till 2024. Uh, And I'm so far very interested in seeing how that plays out because this is the way they're going to be telling this story is going to be a bit different. Similar style in terms of the, 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 the three episodes arc and then but they're going to be jumping to brian do you find yourself asking yourself that question why aren't people talking about this show i do i mean i think to disney's credit like you know they're putting it onto other platforms now to get the word out i think they understand they have a they have a classic that's what this is this is the i mean i don't watch enough television to say this definitively but I think this is the best show on TV this year. Brian, Brian, you just said it right there. You just sealed it up nice and neat. They know they got a classic. This is a classic because this is just unbelievable TV. And I think people, I think it's a show that like, we've seen this before. There are shows that have taken on second and third lives after they first aired. Like they don't always get discovered right away. And then all of a sudden people are checking it out. They come back around to it. And they're like, two years later, they're like, oh, you know, a show is really cool. Like, and, you know, and I think yeah. the show will fit that because it'll age incredibly well. I The things I can't, now that the season's over and we can honestly say, I mean, when was the last time you watched a show where in retrospect, it was no drop off? like. They went one to 12. I'm like, I went back in my head. I'm like, all right, technically the first three, you would probably say are the slowest in terms of setting the pace, but they were good episodes and it just kept getting better. And I would say the finale was a perfect finale for this season. It it didn't try to do too much, which I think some of the Marvel finales do. It didn't cheat on the storylines it had set up. It just... It just moved chess pieces around. You got a couple big things, but then it was like, hey, we need to set the board for next season and we'll keep it going. It's stage. I don't think I've, it's been a long time since I could honestly say a one to 12 show. You can watch any of the 12 episodes and you're getting your money's worth. The thing, one of the the, 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 the things I, I enjoy about great shows is that is the, the, the number of characters that you enjoy watching is not necessarily one person. And I've watched some of the episodes over and over again because they were just so well done. Brian, if this doesn't win the awards that it deserves to win. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Did your wife uh, uh, see the the finale as well? Yeah, or? no, we wa- we want to watch the whole show together. I mean, I like okay. it more than she, I liked it more than she did, but she was like very interested by it. And she actually, it's interesting. She actually liked the action. That was her favorite part of the show. It was like okay, the heist, like in episode six, like the prison break, um, and then some of the action in the finale, kind of that really spy type of cat and mouse that they were playing in the finale like so she really enjoyed the the set pieces in this i probably enjoyed the dialogue that was probably my favorite part of the show but it oh, just shows you this show 100%. has something for everybody the action when it arrived it wasn't cheesy no it wasn't goof it wasn't stormtroopers missing targets and they were hitting 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Civilians were going down. <laughs> I'm actually going to okay. give you a quote from Tony Gilroy. Where actually, I texted it to you. I thought it was one of the greatest quotes I've ever seen about screenwriting because it ties to the action. He said, quote, mm -hmm. when you see characters IQ change dramatically from scene to scene to help the writer out, a script like that is a tell and you realize it's nowhere. And that's it. To your point, so many times you see storytelling where you get into the big payoff and the big climax and you're like, wait a minute, like, that, that character is supposed to be a genius and they're making a rookie mistake. Or like mm -hmm. that character is decidedly mortal and all of a sudden has Superman level powers. Like everything in this show is a calculated move. It is consistent with what they are trying to give you. Like one of the things that blew my mind was that in the prison break, Andy Serkis is given that speech and Andor's goading him into that speech. They do the break and you realize the dude can't swim. No, like, he, which means he knew the whole time he couldn't actually execute the escape. And that wow. moment, I was like, no way. Like that they went through that whole exercise to then show you like the importance and the payoff of this guy's own little arc within this show. Be like, man, he literally, he did it for nothing, but he did it anyway. Cause he yeah. realized deep in his heart with the spirit of rebellion. Yeah. That's. Oh my God. How are you not watching this show? I, I'm hope I'm hoping. And the people watching this show are watching Andor. You deserve if, if if you're tired of if you're not watching anything because there's nothing on or there's nothing there's almost superhero stuff on all the time. Whatever, if you're not watching Andor, um, you got to do yourself a favor and watch this show because uh, the writing is just spectacular. Um, and I can't wait for for season two. Do you know any details, Brian? I think I've mentioned some, but do you know any details of season two and what you're looking forward to in that? Yeah, so I think the other thing that I thought was brilliant for this show, I don't know if it works for every show, but this three episode arc thing really worked for me. Like this idea that like you knew within the season there was this ebb and flow and you were seeing like these self-contained, there was gonna be basically like a season finale within the season four times. So you're going to get that, I think, on a grander scale in season two, because there, season one was one year. Yeah. Season two, each of the three episode arcs is going to be one year. So it's years two, three, four, and five, and you end, he positions Cassian Andor at the end of the show to be ready to roll into Rogue One. Where we one, one, one. But they're keeping that format, which I think was brilliant for this show. And I, I think, like I said, there are definitely other shows that could pull it off, but I don't think it would work for everyone. Like, I, I wouldn't necessarily say you know like if i go back and say what marvel shows could we have done this with i don't think you could have done it with a lot of the shows we've seen i wonder if you could do it with daredevil but given how many episodes they have but i don't think they're going yeah. to but i'm just I, I i'm curious but i i think it, it worked really well the other thing i, I did want to I, I did want to highlight was um we got to do a couple power rankings here so i want to get your feedback on this which speech if you could only take one, so I'm going to give you choices. One speech from this show, which one are you taking? So I'll give you the Luthen speech where he's sort of in the dark alley talking to his informant from the IS, ISB. I will give you Kino Loy's prison break speech, like right before they, they riot. I'll give you Andor's mom's speech in the finale, where in some ways she kind of touches off this like on the ground rebellion. And I will give you kind of piece together, but I will give you the manifesto and Nemec's kind of inspirational comments from his last episode alive into what we hear of him in the finale. I'll give you those four. Who do you, if you only have one, which one are you taking? Brian, I said it in our previous conversation. I can't wait till they get to the manifesto. For me, it was the manifesto because okay. that is what, um, although the other speeches move everyone else, Nemex moves, I think, more of Andor uh, into, I mean, some of the other ones help Andor as well, but I think Nemex manifesto because in the other ones, he's still uh, sort of a, uh, in the pro he's processing stuff you know it's, he's still figuring out things he's still all you know 
doing um, listening to uh Kino and 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 listening to his uh, uh was it Marva was his name what Marva, was yeah, name? That's yeah that's the mom yeah um but with his manifesto this one took time for it to sink in you know and it's because he's he like like you would when you read a book by yourself no distractions and you're just sitting with it and pondering it and understanding its meaning i think that was for me um the more compelling uh speech yeah i thought it was a great speech i, I probably would take the luthan one number one just because that guy comes down and is talking about sacrifice and then he just uncorks this like i have given everything to that and he just goes through the cost of what he's doing um i love the character i love what scars dar did so i probably would yeah, go he, was dope. he was dope he was dope he was and, dope and i thought the backdrop was so weird because it felt like i was almost looking at like vader or like i was looking it was done in a way that like it felt very like dark side like he was in the black hood he's like on this bridge it's in the dark and he's talking dark stuff quite honestly about what it takes to incite rebellion even though he's never going to live to see the fruits of it are there any similar similarities between him and, and palpatine there's a little bit i mean that we I, you know first off it's not a speech but i could watch him debate forrest whitaker all day where they basically are talking about the rules of engagement. And he, and he tells them basically, I'm going to send Krieger to die because I don't want the Empire to catch on to the fact that we're doing something and we have a guy on the inside. And you, that conversation is incredibly powerful. Brian, Forrest Whitaker, he, I think they should nominate him as well for, for Best Supporting because he was dope as well. His facial expressions and understanding and listening to Luther and being, uh, his reaction towards what he was saying there was always it, you believed everything yeah. how that it was just amazing Falls Whitaker is amazing in this uh in this show he's better in this uh, show I think than he was in Rogue One yeah yeah I, yeah, I like yeah. this writing of Saw Gerrera better than what we got by the end of his life in uh in the movie and, and yet even though it's not a speech I gotta say if we're it, okay now I'm gonna say if we're pa so you took the manifesto I took the losing speech if you're power ranking characters from the show, like you're basically like, all right, I'm going to give you, you've got the escape pod and you can take, you know, a top three, call it. Because there's so many characters in this show, quite honestly, who come and go and, or, and some who stay. Who's your top three that like you is go, are going in the escape pod with you? And does Cassian Endor make the top three? I need, I think you always need somebody like Cassian Endor. Okay. <laughs> Are you saying from 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 the rebellion? No, what I take? I'm saying across the show because I'm I'm saying I'm saying yeah. Okay. Forget the okay. fact that they're on opposite side. I'm just saying the totality of this cast. Uh, you can only have three, you know, bronze, silver, gold. And the only three go with you. There's a lot, how you, man. How do you cut it down? That's what I'm saying. But like, it, you know, you, yeah. There's like twelve qualified candidates for this, but Deirdre's character yes. just has to be in the pod. Has to. And I almost want to say that 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 weird stalker dude too. With, I gotta Zero bring card? him. Along. He's so creepy. <laughs> I, I got. I just gotta see how that relationship <laughs> is gonna work. <laughs> I gotta see the end of that. So D, I uh, think Deidre has to make the cut. And the, the wild thing about it is, this show sets you up where I'm telling you those early episodes. You're rooting for her. You're rooting for her inside the ISB to because she's like oh she's the detective she's like the sherlock holmes of this operation and nobody believes her because she's a woman and nobody believes her because she's junior and you're rooting for her and then they send her into the field and she's torturing rebels like it's nothing and i'm like man we rooted for this character two episodes because <laughs> she is harsh and i'm yeah. like but that's what makes a great villain so yeah deidre miro for me absolutely in the top three i mean lutheran yeah so you got Luthen, you got Saw, you have Kino Loy, you can have anyone from the high Kino Loy can't swim, so I, I want to use him. <laughs> you can have Nemec, you can have Marvel, uh, nah. you can I, have the I, droid. I, 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 I wish Nemec would have stayed around. I wish Nemec would have stayed around because I would have wanted to, I, I would have wanted him to be, uh, step into that leader role. Uh, but um, Moth. Mon Mon Mothma? Mothma? I am waiting for her character to really 
give a performance, not similar to Angela Bassett, but powerful like mm -hmm. Angela Bassett. So, because right now she's pet, she's pet, she shook him. Right? She, everything is like, oh, snap, you know what I'm saying? She's she's watching her back. I'm waiting for her to have a, a, this sort of presence among the rebels when that part happens, when she's addressing them, to have that moment. So I, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I 100% agree. I think she's the character who has the most upside in season two of the characters we know. Because we know what Mon Mothma has to become. Right? This is a Cassie and Andor show. But Mon Mothma has to be the leader of the yeah. rebellion it's not luke it's not leia it's not han mon yeah. mothma is the yeah, leader yeah. of the rebellion so to see yeah. this act to see genevieve arrival get from where she is today to where we meet her in that brief scene in return of the jedi and the one thing i keep thinking in the back of my head is that you know when we first meet her the first thing she tells everyone in the room is that the time for our attack has come and then she says many bothans died to bring us this information and i'm thinking in my head i'm like that's Luthan stuff right there. I'm going to send these people to die because the greater good has to be served. She's not there yet as a character, but yeah, we know yeah. she gets there. Yeah, yeah. And we're seeing by the end of this season where she's giving away her daughter in a way she doesn't want to, to get her hands on the money that she wants to launder to help her. She's starting to get those hands dirty. Dirty, yeah. yeah, yeah and I will yeah. say this, Gilroy in, in the interviews, call, he, he has the highest praise for her. He said, we came on set, never met her before, started to work with her, and he said, she's a Stradivarius. That's what he called her. I, I do think Diego Luna has to be in the top three because I think this is a very... You need a guy like him. This is a very selfless lead performance. Like, if we're like, yes. what is the Diego Luna stat line of this show? It's like, he has 27 assists. Like, you can't... He's the glue. You can't have these scenes work without what he does, but he doesn't ever really dominate a lot of the narrative. Well, I mean, Tony Gilroy wrote Matt Damon's Bourne trilogy, and I felt like the final set piece was straight out of J it was Jason Bourne in Star Wars watching Cassian Andor pick his way secretively through the Imperial garrison to get Bix out of there. And the way he's just just a shadowy figure yeah, walking yeah, away, yeah. I was like, he's super spy. And I'm like, I love yeah. it. And then for him to show up, I knew he was going to confront Luthen, but that last line, I was like, that's how you end the season where he's like, kill me or take me or Take in. me in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Luthen was like, let's go, but, baby. I, but that's the yeah. thing. I think Luthen's smile is like, that's what I was waiting for. Way back when, when I said, do you want to do this for real? I was waiting to see this guy in front There you go, Brian. Don't you want to fight them for real? And I guess, Brian, if Luthen was unsure of where Cassian stood, he would have killed them. Because if this guy is capable of doing anything, then he's definitely going to, you know, for money. But now this guy is like, kill me or take me in. And he's like, come on, let's do this. Yep. It is, it, it, hey, a lot of shows, Brian, are going to look kind of weak <laughs> compared to this one when you start watching stuff. Um, That's what I said. Star Wars, Marvel, like the rest of these universes, they got to pick up their game after this. Anything that comes after this, they, 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 we can't go back to Boba Fett. I'm sorry. We can't go back. Yo, shout outs to, to Neil. He's, he, he's my boy. You know Neil, right, Brian? Yeah. He said he like Kenobi better. I was like, Okay, <laughs> so I walked away. I, hopefully, next week when I see him, I can ask him to explain that that comparison. Well, I think that, you know, I think for a segment of the Star Wars fan base, and maybe Neil falls into this. There's a part of them for whom the Force and the Jedi are okay. essential, right? And, and okay. so Kenobi gave you some of those high points, including the the rematch duel that only a Jedi centric show could give you. Yeah. Yeah. And I get Andor that. is everything but that, but that yes, yes. yes. So I, that's the one thing where I feel like, and I gotta be honest, like the show that I'm curious, I don't know if it can rise to this level. Cause it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have Tony Gilroy, but the Ahsoka show is the one I'm curious about in this regard, because that character as a Jedi has some of that gray area that this show lived in successfully. 
And that show also will introduce, I think, what if they cast it well and write it well, should be one of the great new villains we've seen, which is Grand Admiral Thrawn. I mean, that's, yeah. I and mean, that's like, uh, it, I mean, he's written basically as like a cross between like Lex Luthor and Kang and like all these really cerebral villains who also actually, ironically, the way he's written, face dis he faces discrimination within the Empire because he's blue and he's different and like, yet he's the smartest guy in the room. So that's the show that like, if you're trying to like, where can you port the Andor model, but bring the force into it? It's that show. Because remember, Ahsoka's not really a Jedi. She kind of swears off the religion. She just is trained, has the lightsaber. She's more like um, she's more like the female version of like Clint Eastwood in The Man with No Name, like in those old westerns. That's kind of her yeah. character. And so I'm that's the one I'm like circling for like, can we get these vibes, but with the yeah, force yeah. involved? Yeah. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't been watching Andor, I hope you have. And if you have, please share it with your friends. Let them know that this show is not what you think when you hear Star Wars. Because there may be people that, you know, that are not into that. But you don't, I, I don't think you have to be in that, into that to uh, enjoy this, this, I guess, the artistry in the dialogue and the drama and the suspense and the character development and the arcs all of that is done so uh so well that you, you just can't deny yourself of watching this um again looking forward to seeing uh, th th uh this in 2024 when it comes out um a lot to look forward to brian um let us know in the comment section below what you guys think and we'll see you next time on the nerd j report five stars right Oh, hell's yeah. Without saying, all right. It's like, that's it. Why, that's five stars. Yeah, I can't nitpick on this one because I was, bro, you know me, I, I, I see stuff. I'd be like, yo, how? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, they did everything right. There were no, nobody in the background with jeans or nothing like that. It was everything <laughs> was done right with this. Um, yeah, Nurgen Report.